Greetings, flesh creatures. It is I, Megatron. On behalf of TFYLP, I want to congratulate you for listening to the most refined collector podcast on this miserable little planet Earth. Yes. Here you'll find knowledgeable fans discussing every aspect of Transformers and beyond. Now, enjoy the show while I continue my path to complete conquest of all of you miserable biological entities. Predacons! Terrorize! Hi, and welcome to TFYLP. Uh, tonight we are going to be doing a pre-record, so this is going to go up at a different date, uh, probably sometime in July here as we're going to be on vacations and whatnot, so uh, we'll see though, so, but, uh, but anyway, so, uh, tonight I am joined by Paul. Hi. Jack. Hola. How's it hanging? And Jim. Hello, long time no see. This is true. So yeah, yeah. It's it, it's been a while, and of course this won't actually go up for a little bit too. So, but te- <laughs> technically, <laughs> you, I was gonna say, Jim, were you? Was Jim on the last pre-record? Maybe not. I can't remember. I I'll, have to, I'll have to go back and look. I can't remember. It's been long enough. I can't see for sure. Yeah, but, uh, it's going gonna be back on again. It's been quite a while. Yeah. It was the and violence I, and Transformers episode, right? It was the last last one. That was that was the pre record, yeah. Yeah. Maybe. So yeah, I can't remember. But uh but anyway, I, I know I think you've been on uh so like at least one of the Ouch My Wallets, I think. I'm pretty sure, yeah. They that you were on, but uh but yeah, so so, so anyway, so uh tonight we are going to be talking about some of our childhood transformers and what influenced us um you know kind of as we were kids like what we got what you know potentially what we wanted but couldn't actually have back in the day all that type of thing so um i guess you know jim i know this is kind of the topic that you brought up so i don't know if if you have an initial thoughts that uh, that you want to add on there if you want to go well and, and it's been several years uh, since we would uh, touched on this topic. Uh, you can look back in some of the uh, archived uh, TFYLP episodes uh, about why we collect what we collect. And uh, I, I just figured it was it was you know about time that we we touch upon that again. You know because we've had some some changes to the staff since then. And uh, yeah. so you know couldn't hurt to you know touch base every once in a while revisit a, a good topic. Get some some new insights. Uh, so, I figure why not? Yeah, we we don't really have a, a lot of variety on the show because I think that you know at least three quarters of us were G one kids. Uh, right. But Here we go but again. I think that there was at least a little variability in the fact that like all of our ages. I don't think that you know, at least myself, I was not like you know, in it, like I was four when the cartoon first came out. So I wasn't quite to that age yet. Um, I started kind of really getting like when the, when the movie came out, like that's where I started following it more. And then I know that, you know, uh, I think Jim, you had said you're even a little bit younger. So, um, yeah, yeah, so 37 in August. Yeah. So, (laughs) so for you, like, (laughs) when's my birthday? (laughs) He's getting old. Can't remember. I don't remember all <laughs> So, so for you, like, were you? Uh, did you actually even see the G one cartoon, like, when it originally came out? Like, did you have to catch it on like VHS and, and things like that, or both? Both, actually. Um, I I vividly remember I was uh, I was either just in kindergarten or just before kindergarten. Uh, my older brother would wake me up. 36 a.m. and you know you know of course get cereal and all that get ready and we go downstairs and watch cartoons uh and it would be a block of like gi joe transformers uh mm-hmm. mask inspector gadget uh i mean you name it 80s cartoon smurfs you know and then I, i'd be watching cartoons hey, all the way through time to, time to leave for p.m kindergarten because i had uh, i had kindergarten in the 
excuse me, in the afternoon. And uh, so, yeah, I, I watched episodes as they as they aired. I don't know in my youthful mind at the time if they were uh, reruns. I'm, I'm sure they likely were, uh, given that I didn't come about till '83. Uh, but also, there were times we would, we would go to the video store to rent videotapes, and uh, for a time, we even rented VCRs. Yep. Oh, I know that was a thing. It had a handle; like the whole thing was like a suitcase. It's crazy. Um, and we would rent uh, in the big boxes with the big boxes, uh, the Transformers VHSs. Uh, sometimes we do Thundercats. Uh, I discovered Transor Z that way. Um, so, I mean, I, so yeah, I, I watched some of them as they aired on, on weekday mornings before, you know, before I went to kindergarten and then uh, also on, on VHS at times. Uh, then later on in the early nineties, I don't know if any of you guys remember the sci-fi channel for a couple of years, they, uh, re-aired generation one, uh, like 5 a.m. So animation block, they had that. I had a, I had a paper route awesome. back yeah. then. I had a paper route back then, so I definitely saw it at 5 a.m. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, ah, oh, this is great! I mean, uh, there was a Bionic Stix, a few others. Uh, but I, as I recall, I think the Sci-Fi Channel... Oh, hey, Jim, your audio's out again. It just... No. It... Just... Now I can hear you. I don't know. I don't know if, like, the cable on your headphones is... What's the thing? The, the mic is... Now I can't hear you. Yeah, it was just back and forth, and yeah, I, I don't know if you have like a short in your mic cable or something. I hope not because it's brand new. Oh, I don't know. I don't. I don't know what's going on. But yeah, now now you're okay. I can hear you now. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, so I've, I've not had this webcam a year yet. Huh. So, but one, one thing I always uh, find is frustrating. I feel like this happened a lot with some of the '80s toys. Is that like I was the same way as you that I would I would get up and watch that same block of cartoons with Transformers and GI Joe and whatnot. And a lot of those like you couldn't buy by the time like when they were doing those reruns and whatnot. Like the actual Transformers toys, like in the cartoon, were no longer on the shelves. Like so, you right. you know, if you caught season three or whatever, you like you might be able to get, you know, some of, some of that stuff. But it was always always frustrating that like, you know, Optimus Prime was not readily available. Like when I was old enough to actually get, you know, buy Optimus Prime. Right. Yeah, that, that was that was uh, the case for a lot of uh, a lot of cartoons as they went into their syndicated reruns. Uh, like I, I'm sure all you guys remember the USA Cartoon Express. You know there were some cartoons on there. Like you know I, I wanted to go to the store. I, I wanted a toy of Jabberjaw or you know whatever other cartoon was on there. It wasn't necessarily in existence anymore. You, you know the funny thing is, is it still happens today. Like with my kids yeah. because they put a lot of these old shows on Netflix and or yeah. youtube whatever it may be to be tv and so my kids will like want like oh i want these power ranger toys and i'm like sorry Good man luck. like those those are that's from like 20 years ago like i i'll try to see what's on ebay but uh -huh. yeah like a lot of the a lot of the stuff it's like you just can't can't get so some of the but, most expensive bricks ever yeah the power rangers toys so, so Paul, what era did you grow up in? Like, were you into the G one prior to the movie, or did, were you kind of collecting oh, yeah. after that? Uh, I was. I mean, I remember seeing the commercials for the movie on TV, and I was like, <laughs> you, you, I remember it used to say, you know, all the all the trailers back then used to say, check your local listings, and I was like, how do you do that? Because I was like two or three or something, you know, like too young to understand it. I thought it was like a big deal and, and hard to get hard to know when to go to a movie or something. It was yeah. confusing to me as a very young child. And when I told my mom about it, she's like, sure, we can go see it. I was like, we, we can oh? just go. Like, we don't need like, someone. To, we don't need to be approved or like someone allow us to go. So yeah, I was definitely like early. I was born in 81. So mm, okay. I like just became cognizant of things outside of the play bo the the sandbox like as this stuff was yeah. was coming. So I'm definitely 
like straight up G one er and not a comic guy. Most like all straight cartoon and toys, and just having you hear t- talk about the like the Netflix effect and like the internet in general, it's like toy companies haven't really figured out how to adapt to that. No. It's like, hey, if oh, your, really? sh- your your show you made, that can last forever. So why don't you make the toy line last forever to go along with it? Or something, you know, it just seems like it's probably hard to do, but it just they just have not adapted to it in the way that I would think would make sense now that you brought it up. Well, no, I mean, they have, there's some toy lines and whatnot, like where shows on Netflix and stuff where they've dropped a toy line at the same time as it you know but i think the thing that's a lot different you know now compared to back then is is that like there was only a couple channels you know like so all of us watch transformers you know whereas like my kids binge like my kids binge transformers like years ago and now could care less about it just because like they're like yes it was one of the many shows i watched and then i watched 20 seasons of power rangers and then i watched like you know, whatever, Ninjago or something, you know, just whatever. Like, they, it, it, it was one of many shows, whereas to us, like, you know, the, the, the toilet, like, it was like there's only limited options you had. Sure, yeah, but, like, every kid might go through that same process. Or, or like, a, mm-hmm. a large percentage of children that are, like, of this age range are going to watch all these old shows that their parents kind of, like, maybe guide them to. And it's like... There's a whole new, fresh human being, like, soaking this stuff up. Yeah. And if the toys were there to get, they'd probably be got. So why why don't they... I mean, I mean, you know, I, I can understand why. It's complicated, but... Uh, right. Well, and, that's and what that's I think. The discussion, so, sorry. Yeah, I was going to say, <laughs> I was like... <laughs> yeah, we're, we're, like, straight off with that. But, you know, whatever. It's all good discussion and all that. Um, I was going to say, I mean, I think that's part of the reason why... Uh, they're trying to go to those evergreen designs now and trying to do all this stuff because if you happen to watch G1 Transformers, you can pick up a Cyberverse toy and like it looks similar to Optimus oh, Prime or Bumblebee or just whatever. Close like enough. it's close. It's it's close enough. And then or the same thing with Cyberverse, like to where you know they kind of get it in in their brains um, and whatnot. And so I think that some of that is what kind of drives some of the um, the Chug stuff now, or the Generations things now or whatever, is is that there is the uh, kids watching the show on, you know, whatever, Netflix or wherever it may be, and, and picking up some of the toys and stuff. Yeah, but they know it doesn't look the same. You know, like, they're like, oh, this isn't really what I watch, but, I mean, I guess you have to go Masterpiece okay. for that. Well, well <laughs> right, kind of but, like... Right, I was going to say, but were the toys that we collected and a lot of the G1 toys, did they look like the cartoon? Like, you're telling me, I like, Ratchet know. and Ironhide, like, those, the, the toys they didn't, didn't even really have look... heads. <laughs> right, right, exactly. Where is the head? But, but you know oh, what? That's... Back then, we didn't really care. You know, Pretty really, much. They, 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 the toys were cool. You know, they, they were a new thing. And, you know... Well, you, you lived off, like, liquid imagination back then, so... Yeah. Like, <laughs> right, I, but I mean... I've, I've said in a previous episode, you know, that there, there was so much, you know, more to the toys than just, you know, cartoon accuracy. I mean, uh, I, I, I said that I, uh, previously, uh, one thing I, that was a, a draw for me was the little catalogs. Yeah. You know, I would yeah. spend hours mm-hmm. just looking at the little catalogs, looking at the other other figures, looking at the battle scenes, the artwork and stuff. I yeah. was the same way with Armada when the Armada toys would come with the catalog packed in with the comic, uh-huh. the instructions. They had like so much packing material. You could oh, spend yeah. as much time looking through those as you did spending with the toy itself. <laughs> That's why I love the Armada. Armada and, and, and Energon. Energon, Energon, I think, had comics too. And then the yeah. Cybertron, they, yep. they had the maps. Cybertron. Yep. Yep. Yeah. I, I mean, that's one thing I do think yeah. that they are kind of missing out on right now with like no longer putting uh, the catalogs out. And the thing I think would be kind of cool is if they could put, like, say, for example, Earthrise. By the time Earthrise actually hits, like, you could probably have a catalog for Waves 2 and 3. I was going to say, do, like, a little 
like kind of like what they do with baseball cards or any kind of sports cards have a checklist of like oh i need this one check check right. check do that i have like a little photo and that'd be like your catalog such yeah checklist. i mean i think the tough thing is is like a lot of the toys don't aren't on the shelves as long as uh you know yeah. toys were yeah. in the past um, but at the same time, I think that you probably could do something where you had the next wave or something. And I, I think doesn't Botbots does the checklist, don't they? Yes. Yeah, but it's all yep. it's all illustrations. You know, yeah. it's oh, not yeah. it's not like yeah. photographs of the toys and stuff. <clears throat> but yeah, I, I think the one thing too with the G one toys is like the fact that the the figures were well built, but they were simple. And, and that's one thing I think that is really tough. Like, I don't feel like Hasbro's done a great job with that with most of their newer toy lines. Um, I think the one exception to that is Rescue Bots. Like, the Rescue Bots toys, I mean, they're, they're complete bricks, but they're really solid, or at least especially the older ones, were, were really solid. And so the kids could easily transform it back and forth. Whereas, like, I feel like a lot of the Cyberverse toys... Or just whatever the R.I.D. when you did it and stuff. It, it's just not like as easy to transform some of those figures. So like I have to transform the figure for for my kid instead of him doing it. Or like I have to help him out with it. So. No, it's kind of got me poking. I want to see if I can find a catalog or checklist. So give me one moment. I think with the yeah. turnaround is so fast now, like, yeah. even though it seems slow, like they, you know, they they are working on stuff for like a year and a half from now, right now. Right. But like, like you said, it doesn't last on the shelf more than like a month or two months is the shelf life when the stuff used to be like perpetual. Like G One right. Soundwave was just like out for three years, yeah. <laughs> pretty much. You know, like new stuff would come in and like replace it or whatnot. But like, there was a lot more bang for the buck uh, of spending the time to make those catalogs because it's not like it's not like they're just press the easy button and make a catalog. Like to make those well, you have to put a lot of thought into them, and marketing has to be involved, and the toy line has you know everything has to be involved to make it to make it correct. So it's actually, I would think it's quite challenging to get that done right but i would love to see an online checklist at least something yeah yeah, yeah. a spreadsheet <laughs> i remember yeah. actually that does remind me there was like this collecting app and it it wasn't updated the greatest but it did kind of have that to where it would kind of sort whatever line by you know franchise by line and then it would be like oh you've got this one you got this one you got this one you don't have this one you don't have this one I remember that I had it on my phone. I don't remember the app, but yeah, I remember they do must, have some must, must not have been that good then. No. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I guess the only thing I can think of that's even reminiscent of like what we had with the kids is um, they still do books for um, the uh, uh, for Christmas. So like Target will do like a. a a book that you get in the mail or not a book, but like a big pamphlet kind of thing yeah. with all the toys, oh, yeah. like all the upcoming toys for, for Christmas. And so, uh, they'll send that. And then Amazon, I think does one as well. And Walmart does one. So there is still like some of that nostalgia that we had of like looking through the Sears catalog or whatever. When we were kids, um, I used to that do that kinda, all the time. Yeah. So, so my kids still do that for Christmas. Like they'll get it in, you know, October, November, and, you know, we'll, like, look through it, and they'll figure out what they want and and whatnot to ask Santa for Christmas and and whatnot. So at least that is still going on, even though, you know, the checklists are not really a thing anymore. But, uh, but yeah, Jack, I guess, uh, so you're the only non-G1-er, I guess, uh, here. So what, uh, what was your childhood... I'm the youngin, so I had to get my start with the Unicron trilogy. I was born in 98. Yeah, here we go, youngin. Oh, man, I was yep. graduating from high school. Um, Post. <laughs> um, but yeah, I didn't really get into R.I.D. It never really clicked with me until, because um, I mean, I did see a few of the toys, but uh, I really started clicking with Armada because I remember 
I was with a friend of mine and he had Armada Unicron and I go, Oh, what's that? And he kind of showed me what it did. And I'm like, okay, I want more. <laughs> so yeah, that's where I got my Star Wars Armada and sprouted to there to, you know, this. So got to catch them all. Mm-hmm. Pretty much. Yeah. It seems pretty, like a lot that, uh, the whole Unicron trilogy would be pretty fun play pattern for kids. Like with all the, um, you know, there's like what because you had combiners and you had the um, was it the uh, micro or what's the yeah, mini cons, mini-cons. mini-cons and mini-cons. all that. Mini so. cons. Then you got the uh, Cybertron keys to where you can collect all kinds of different ones that would unlock special abilities and all that stuff. And I I got a buddy that is like super into the cyber keys. He collects the <laughs> rare rare cyber keys and stuff, and I'm like, what in the hell, dude? But it's almost like endearing. <laughs> Because he'll be like, oh. You just muted, Paul. Oh, uh, yeah, you're. Yep, Sorry. I just cut. I thought it was yeah, me. I hit, I hit the mute. I don't know how that happened, but. Oops. Yeah, this buddy of mine. You're, is you're like, like censoring really yourself. In... Yeah, like, <laughs> stop talking, Paul. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's interesting that people can have, like, such a weird, you know, super narrow view of what is cool. And, you know, even the cyber keys fall under that jurisdiction hey. sometimes so the cyber key is like he doesn't collect the figure that goes with the cyber key uh not necessarily no <laughs> interesting just says like a shadow box just what the... well, like there's there's some pretty rare ones that like only came with galaxy force toys you uh-huh. know or something like that or like uh uh-huh. some special rare release and or it was a store exclusive or something so there are some rare ones so can I kind of draw back for a second? Because yeah. I did find a catalog. It's oh. actually fairly recent. Uh, actually came from Age of Extinction. Hey, and I gave yeah, yeah. up all different yeah, kinds of stuff. And, but I mean, hey. That's a, they made one, but like that's you know that's an F for effort. <laughs> Pretty much. It's, it, it's the, here's some one-step toys, you dumbasses. <laughs> like, like, oh, no, no, they do have deluxe. They do have deluxe on the end. And then some other... Hey, they, they, they got Creo on there, so you know that that wins in my book. And the Battle Masters, when it didn't even look like the characters, like Megatron, yeah, freaking Megatron, and he doesn't even look like Megatron. It's like, what is this? I mean, it's like that. That just that's just busy work that was fluff. Like someone's like, oh, we need a cat, we need a, a promo piece in here. It's like, well, okay, here's one that doesn't promote the brand. Here you go. Pretty much. Here's here's one percent of the shit that's coming out. So we did our jobs. Send it. Send this. It's time to go on vacation, boys. And you know, like, that era of the brand, the last night we were at a, you know, that was like a real low point. And there you go. Oh yeah, sure enough. There's a hey. Armada catalog. I got more. Woo! <laughs> and and that's the thing. I mean, you have to ask yourself, like, with, it, like, as a parent, is, okay. So as a collector, like, we know. Like, as soon as the news, like, we're generating, you know, the news here or whatever. It's like all of us know about all this stuff. Or, you know, worst case, you go to TF Wiki or, you know, whatever, tfu.info or something like that to find out, like, all the different releases, right? But, like, if I'm just a random parent and I don't know anything about Transformers and my kid says he wants trans, like, how do you even figure out what, like, what to get the kid, you know? No, Pretty much. Google. And, and that's that's the thing is is like I've had to help out other parents that where their kids have been into cyberverse and whatever and I've had to be like all right get them this toy get them this you know like I've tried to direct them to you know to certain toys uh, you know because they're like my kid wants all the you know he wants a star scream which one do I want to get or you know, just whatever it may be um, and and so that's that's the thing that's kind of frustrating is, is <laughs> like so. So you sent them all to has you sent all those parents to Haslab Unicron, right? Like this is this is the one. <laughs> this is what you gotta get. <laughs> right. This is the one that's gonna put them through college, okay? <laughs> right, right, exactly. It's oh. like yeah. So if you want your kid to start scalping or whatever, then yeah. So start them young. <laughs> exactly. So I mean, I guess it is kind of like a college thing for the. For the Unicron, because I mean, it would it take like three years to come out or a couple years, whatever it is. So, I re- I remember being in college. I kind of got back into Transformers in when I graduated high school. Because I remember I got money from graduating high school and I spent it all on importing the car robots toys. Because <laughs> so I, like, I was like, 
what is what is this? Because I did not, I wasn't into Beast Wars at all, whatever. Yeah. But but like through my, you know, through 2000 to 2004, that was the Unicron trilogy. So when I would go to stores in college, which was always a big deal because I didn't have a car. So I was like, oh, we're going to Target. <laughs> I just remember like going to the toy aisle and be like, wow, that's that new toy I saw on BigBot.com. That's Scorponok. <laughs> Like, and I remember that Scorponok at that one target, I saw it like four times over six months. And every time I was like, should I buy it? You know, because like it was either that or ramen noodles. Like, and I never bought it. Yeah. <laughs> I just looked at it again and again and again. <laughs> so what What did your, fr- just like Chris, I know this is way off topic too, but like, what did your friends think? Like when you, so you would go and make a target run, right? Like in college with your buddies there and you're like running more to likely the my girlfriend your girlfriend okay <laughs> less like like i didn't go to the store with my buddies for anything it was like hey my girlfriend i remember i was like hey can i go to the toy aisle and she's like cool yeah like this sounds oh. like a cool thing and then, like the first yeah. time and then like the third time she's like you what the fuck <laughs> what are we doing here? yeah <laughs> I'm no, not i remember her now I remember when classics first came out and like I collected all that stuff. And so my wife was like, yeah, this is great. You know what? I mean, she, she was my wife at the time, but um, like, she's like, yeah, that's great. You know, whatever. And then, um, I don't know, I guess we were trying to think when was that? When did they first classics? First 2006. Okay. Yeah. Was, I guess, yeah, I, guess I guess we, I guess we had just been uh, married after that. But so, Nevertheless, like, you know, so after the initial run of classics, like when the next like universe was coming out and and whatnot, like she was like, so I started looking into that and she's like, wait a minute, like you're, you're going to keep going. Like, like how, how long are you going to start keep collecting these things? And, uh, yeah, little, little did she know at the time. Cause I had, I mean, what was it? The the classics were, was there like a dozen of them? Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it was it was something like that, and so there then was, it's like there was two. Well, if you count the the Target exclusive pack, there was a total of three Seekers, Grimlock, like three three cars, Prime Megatron. Uh, we we don't actually need the real answer. We, yeah, but so but so anyway, so nevertheless, so like yeah, whatever, rough, like I, I would like, say less than twenty. Yeah. So so then when like yeah, the next was, wave comes out or whatever of like you know wheel jack and all that kind of stuff she's like wait a minute like how long are you gonna keep like collecting those so i i kind of stopped for a while but um yeah so so anyway so back to to childhood uh you know transformers so i guess um you know jim what was your like instrumental like you know number one transformers figure that you had as a kid well really have a, a specific one um i don't know that i that i necessarily have one major uh favorite um because i mean i i had the different figures you know from from christmas or birthdays or you know just right. begging my parents at kmart uh until they just bought it to shut me up type of thing <laughs> um, shut up now you got your right, toy right. shut up uh but I mean, if, if I had to pick, I would say probably, probably horrible, mm-hmm. uh, horrible with crab. Dark horse pick. Um, but I mean, there, there were there were several uh, over the years. Um, not not too many. I had uh, a lot of them were uh, the recommendations of my older brother. Uh, six years my senior, he was mm-hmm. one that grew up with uh, you know the eighty four line. Uh, and so he would be picking up one, and he'd be like, here, pick this one, pick this one. You know, I, I don't know if it was because he wanted me to, to play along with him, and that would be the the, the uh, antagonist to his character, or if he just he, if he wanted to use me as a means to get two toys, or, <laughs> or what it was. That's how I would uh, do it. See, yeah, as you were talking about the, uh, the toy to shut 
the kids up or whatever. Like I, I always feel like that these were kind of like that, which is the uh, uh, the GoBots. I, I don't know about you guys, but I feel like I had a lot more of these GoBots just because you know I don't know what, what I can't remember how much they were like back in the day, but you know the, these were the ones where like my mom would be like, here you go, ha- have this. Um, I, I feel like I had a lot more GoBots than I did Transformers. It reminds me. It reminds me of that meme that's been poking up. It's like. Oh, you're, you know, it's like the kids at the store with the parents. It's like, oh, I want a Transformer. But the mom's like, no, we got Transformers at home. And it's the GoBot every time. Yeah. Just to get the kid to shut up. <laughs> well, and, and we had, we had a few GoBots too, admittedly. And they, they were cool too. You know, we, you know, we played with those just as like we did with, you know, with the Transformers and, uh, with, uh, oh, what was that one with the magnets? Uh, oh, I know who you're talking Star- about too. Starcom. Right? Starcom was another one we had. GI Joe's. My brother was really big into GI Joe's. Joe's. Had the hammerhead and all that. Uh, but there, there was just so much uh, interplay, I guess, amongst the different right. brands. Ninja Turtles, uh, which made for some weird, weird pairings. But, uh, but yeah, know, like uh, I, I was gonna say, like a lot of the toys, like the you know Bumblebee and some of those. You know, smaller figures like some of those might be ones that you you would pick up as a kid, uh, just as the you know, okay, you know, here like you've been good, like we'll give you this or whatever. But most, a lot of those Transformers were relatively expensive toys, and so like you pretty much, I mean, I don't know about you guys, but for me, like I didn't get a lot of those except for for Christmas and whatnot, or my birthday much. or was... whatever. That that's that's the only time I get the Transformers. So again, that's kind of the reason why I had more, more go bots and, and more of the smaller figures, um, or even like the Insecticons, like the G1 mm. Insecticons. I, that was another one. I remember that was for myself was pretty. Well, a lot of the ones I had, uh, as a kid, uh, you know, start starting out, I had, uh, Oh, goodness. Uh, I had, well, actually, right off the bat here, uh, Squawk Box, which I recently reacquired finally uh, last month, which is an oh, excellent nice. figure. Um, that was one of, uh, I'm pretty sure that was actually one of the first ones I uh, I had ever got, uh, along with a uh, top spin, or no, yeah, top spin. Um, then uh, in in the spring of '89, uh, my family had a had a house fire, and they, everything just ended up in the basement. The house at home just total loss. Uh, squawk box included. For some reason, my top spin was at my great grandmother's house, so it survived. Um, but in the aftermath of that, uh, we we actually ended up staying with her for a couple months or so until we were able to kind of get back on our feet uh, financially, and to help to kind of help me cope a little bit, she ended up getting me Horrible, which I've also recently reacquired. Nice. So that's kind of the, the reason why why that one has a, a bit of sentimentality to, uh, to me as mm-hmm. well. Uh, but like with the with the Squawk Talk and Beast Box, the, uh, the Squawk Box combination, uh, a lot of what I would get, you know, at the store, it, it was Kmart Paris, Illinois, used to be there. Uh, it's, it's like a lumber yard or something now. Uh, would be the you know the, the different cassettes or I, I got a kickback or uh, uh, can't think of what else now uh, but it was but it was usually a lot of the, the smaller figures. Uh, Eric. Oh, your mic went out again. And I'm gonna have to. Now, now you're okay. <laughs> Apparently, if I just huh. tell you that, if you move, then. You seem to be okay. back and forth and back and forth. I'm wondering if there might be a short with my headphones that's interfering with the mic jack. Oh, Not potentially. Oh. Now we can't hear yep. you again. Yep. Toast. Oh, a little bit. Okay. Now, there now we go. Here. Okay. Um, yeah, it, it would it would usually be one of the. Oh, now, now, now you're gone again. <laughs> we can hear it, but I think there's a little bit of an echo. 
An evening of technical difficulties with T F Y L P. Even as we do pre-records, you still yeah. still have difficulties. Well, we're not <laughs> editing this out either. Oh no! Oh no! So L- L- Lucas will put subtitles below me. E- editing. Oh, no. yeah. Try to read books yeah. as best as you can. I was gonna <laughs> say you. Uh, <laughs> you you let me know what you like said or whatever. Or, oh, we can actually have Mr. Starscream. <laughs> we can have Mr. Starscream uh, like uh, dub uh-huh. over the, the parts or whatever. That, that would be great, cool. huh? That would be funny. <laughs> uh, Here's Jim with the weather. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, uh, it would be a lot of the smaller figures, and then. Uh, uh, additionally, there was uh, Rad with with Lionizer here toward the end of G one. This is one of the last ones I got. This is actually my original Rad. Uh, wow, complete. Nice. One of the very nice. very few that I actually still have. He's a oh, little God. loose, a little floppy, uh, missing his Autobot symbol. Well, no, I take it back. There, there's like a corner of the paper for the sticker still there. But, uh, <laughs> I find it crazy that know? that you have some of like you really like some of those. Um, super obscure toys from back then and they're like you know most people when they talk about transformers they really just mean like the first two seasons yeah yeah the first the first two catalogs and maybe you get to the target masters and headmasters but you're like beyond that already most of my first-hand experience with the with the toys themselves were in the later years of generation one uh so as a result i ended up with you know like i was saying flat top and, and and uh you know Erector, my brother had Erector. Um, uh, and what, what's astounding, though, is a lot of the figures that we had as kids, uh, he and I, are some of the more expensive ones. He had Pincher, he had Bludgeon. You know, uh, I had Swap Talks, and then later, I uh, after the fire, I, I ended up with Slam Bands. Uh, yeah, it's, it's because oh, those oh, oh, th- those were not ubiquitous, you know, you know and, and like. Looking forward, you, again, I've said this before, you can't predict what's going to be rare if you could. Right. Like, if it was super popular, it's less likely to be rare. And I remember seeing stores at the at the end, tail end of Transformers that, like, just had tons of pretenders on, like, 50% off because that stuff didn't sell well. Right. So, like, it just got – a lot of it got tossed. And and um, that's why it's it's hard to find now because it wasn't sought after during in the day. Right. So no one kept it. No one had it. No one had it around. It all got trashed. But yeah, that, your brother had those. But you were still into Transformers then, when a lot Absolutely. of kids had gotten out, and so that's why you have some of Absolutely. these. Absolutely, and we we were those are normal for you. Yeah, we, cool. we were both uh, into it uh, on on through uh, pretty much the the duration of uh, Generation Two. Even uh, he and I, and this is one actually I I got last week at. Uh, the toy drop there in Greenwood, uh, South Indy. Uh, I have now reacquired a complete Generation Two Devastator. When uh, when that was out, uh, he and I little by little uh, completed it together. Uh, he had the bottom three Shark guns, and I had the, uh, the hook with both arms, Bone Crusher and uh, Scavenger. And uh, Jim, Jim, I sorry to interrupt you, but you know how I know you're a true fan. Was that? You have all the handguns attached to Devastator. <laughs> That's because I'm tired of using them. In all the was, little funny ways that it's not official, but like it makes yes, the most yes. sense. Like the gun st- sticking out of Mixmaster and stuff, and yeah, Hook's gun is shooting from his chest. That's great. Yeah, the only thing is, I do that too. Gun, and then the missiles are not uh, storable. You have to. You have to sh- put. You could put some in like Mixmaster or Scrapper's hands, but like yeah. turn them sideways, so it's like bullshit, but. I was trying then, to do that with the G1 reissue, you Use them as I, boosters. Yeah, yeah. I hope I it's didn't derail you. Play. It's the play pattern. But, uh, yeah, no, we were into it all through Generation 2, and then uh, uh, completely unexpected, uh, on my brother's 16th birthday, it would have been in 19... What did you say? 77? I don't know, 93 or 94. So basically, middle of G2, his 16th birthday... He gives me all of his toys, just free and clear. Like, these are now yours. 
the G.I. Joes, the Ninja Turtles, the Transformers, the Gobots, Star Kong, everything, Ghostbusters, uh, uh, you know, just were mine now. And so due to that, that is another reason why a lot of them have such sentimentality to me is because the, he was willing to do that. Uh, I guess, I don't know if he was losing interest or he thought maybe it would hurt his chances to try to find a date because, you know, it's awkward teenage years. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, I still don't know to this day his rationale, but uh, not long after that, just not even four years later, I, I discovered uh, you know uh, Yahoo Hooligans and eBay and stuff. I'm like, oh my god, this stuff's worth money! What? As a result, I start digging through you know old boxes and things. Like, okay, I know I have that head. I know I have that gun. Where's the legs? You know, I started trying to piece together what I could, and then from there, I segued slowly and gradually through ultimately my high school into becoming now a lecturer. So see I, I personally don't have any of my own toys from or any of the toys that were my mom's house in my in my mom and dad's house because we sold all that stuff at garage sales. Like we would always <laughs> like a couple times a year we were having garage sales and we sold like I had so many McDonald's toys and so many of the uh, just regular, you know, toys and like all my Transformers, all that kind of stuff. The only stuff I actually still have is from my uh, grandma. Like all the stuff we had at her house, uh, like she she kept it all, and so then like sure, yeah. um, you know she gave it back to us like you know later on, um, but. Uh, uh, yeah, so so Paul, um, you know, for you, what was kind of like your top figures that that you had back in the day? Um, I remember, I I I didn't have a lot of like things that I would think I would have had. Like, I never had a sound wave. I never had a shock wave. Like, really, like kind of key toy. I don't think I even had a bumblebee. I, ha- I remember getting an Optimus Prime, but like the thing that like sticks out, the th- thing I would answer that question with, I loved Slug Slinger because his knees could bend, and I would just keep him in that bent knee pose, like he's shooting the gun. Uh-huh. Shooting and the I line. loved, I-, I loved his gun because it was like big. It was like, it had the part that detached, you know, and went on the guy's back. So it had like it was like a more, a more complicated target master compared to the rest. Mm-hmm. So I really liked Slug Slinger. And he had the two cockpits, which was also super rad. And I loved his color. Everything about that toy was great. I loved it. Um, I thought it was better than all the other the other two guys. And I never had the other two guys. But the thing that st- stands out even more than that was probably I completed one combiner, and, and it was Abominus. Uh, mm-hmm. And I just thought those characters were so cool. I was so bummed out they weren't. They were hardly in the show. But when they did show up in the show, I was like going crazy because I, oh, right. I love those guys yeah. they were monsters their colors were super red uh so so that th- that's probably th- those two stood out i've sold them all since but like i i actually kept a fair amount of my boxes oh like hmm. um especially like the bait like i i had a i guess fort i guess you probably mentioned fort max because i had Fort Max because we used to go to the Toys R Us across the river and I saw it on shelves I was like oh my god there it is and it was a hundred dollars or something you know and so That's it so felt crazy. like it was six months that I, I did like a special like like if I took out the trash I got 25 cents or something like I did a six month like regiment to work it off to get the money to get that toy and imagine that it was on the shelf for six months <laughs> because <laughs> i got it I, I worked my ass off my parents convinced me to do it and i was like a good kid and i i i, I had it That's but i crazy. kept that thing in the box and i still have it like and i, I think i drew on the box even well the, the crazy yeah. thing I, I feel like with that you know and we kind of talk about like video games versus toys now and you think about it okay so fort max came out in like what 87 87 something yep. like that Whereas, like, when did the Nintendo Entertainment System... Like, Atari was out. 85. And... Yeah. So, right. I was about to say so like, I know, I know for me that... Nintendo any of costs those more than Fort Max. Super <laughs> expensive. Like, how much was the Nintendo back in the day? Wasn't it, like, 100 bucks? 
I would Great, no. I have Back to like to look that one up, but uh, but yeah, like my sister I swear, and I got it for Christmas one year, so I've no yeah, idea. no, no. I remember like Santa yeah, Bus. Same, same deal as us or whatever that uh, that we got ours for Christmas, but um, this yeah, the deluxe set is one hundred seventy nine, but I could be wrong. So, so the, yeah. the deluxe set, Jack was was that the one that included like uh, Gyromite and Rob the Robot? Oh, that's what I'm trying to. I don't know. Should I don't have a I, I know my mom wouldn't have had that much money to, but uh, ne- nevertheless, like the um, yeah, I don't know. Like even back then, I feel like if it would have been that expensive, that I, I would have probably picked the video games over, <laughs> over uh, you know a transformer. So that I mean, Fort Max is an incredible figure, though. Like I just can't even imagine having that as a kid. I mean that. Well, I, re- I remember thinking Metroplex was kind of lackluster. I was like, oh, he's kind of fat. He doesn't do much. But then when I, when that next catalog came out and there was Fortress Maximus, I was like, oh, oh my God. That is <laughs> that is the coolest thing I've ever seen. And so, like, yeah, I busted my ass and got one. But back to your game thing, I remember, like, getting that Nintendo. My sister actually wanted it more than me. Mm-hmm. But I had, like... I don't know, I had like $7. I was like, yeah, let's go to Target. Let's buy a new game. Games were like 40 bucks. I was like, what? I could not believe it. <laughs> I was like, right. this is crazy. I was too young to understand. Absolutely. So, But yeah, no, that, that Metroplex, uh, too, I don't know how much he was, but I mean, that was one of the toys I kind of sought after when I was a kid. I never ended up getting just because, again, it was too expensive. Because wasn't it like 50 bucks? I'm thinking I was gonna say, reason. I think it, I, I remember oh, seeing a few photos with, like the original sticker, like the price tag stickers, and I remember like forty, fifty or something. Yeah. So I'm kind of shocked when I do see those photos and see what the price tags are on the box. I know. Oh, God, that's, you know, I know there's inflation and whatever, but sure, I remember yeah. as a kid thinking like, oh my God, that's that's like, fifty, sixty, seventy dollars. That's so much money. Like I'll never get those. Yeah. It was yeah. Those were like Christmas. Easter yeah, but like again, like, like, I mean, $50 in 1984 was, like, a lot of money, or, like, 87 yeah. or whatever, you know, so, like, that's that's the thing is, is that I, I think that some people have kind of done that, like, now with the current line, where people complain about the price of the current figures, and they're like, well, if you take into account inflation or whatever, I think the prices are somewhat similar to, you know, kind of what they were back then uh, on like a lot of the figures and whatnot so well, back back in the back in the mid 80s uh federal minimum would have been what three or four some odd dollars and, and, and change oh it's it, it it wasn't, it wasn't even minimum would have been uh, when uh, i started working when, yeah i was gonna say in 96 when i started working is 425 so yeah i like, guess how much i made so I, yeah. it had to have been less than that like right a lot less or whatever so but uh, anyway, so I was going to say one of my uh, favorite figures uh, from when I was a kid was Blaster. Mm. And Blaster? that was one Black that I, I got. Yeah. And um, pew, 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 pew. I think I got him for Easter one year. <laughs> um, but uh, I don't know. It always it irks me a little bit when a lot of people call him like a C-list character or whatever. I'm like, no, like he's the, you know, cause he was kind of like the opposite of, of sound wave, which of course is an A-list yeah. character. And so I'd be like, no, no, like, you know, he's just as good as, um, as sound wave or whatever. So, but, uh, yeah, I always really liked, you know, the, the blaster character. And again, Jim, kind of like what you talked about, it's like the thing that's kind of cool about these figures and sound wave as well is, you know, you get this for Christmas or whatever it may be. And then, but the, the, the tape characters, then you could go and pick those up and they would interact with the figure. And, yeah. and so those you, you could pick up like again for allowance or, or, you know, whatever it may be. So, but like look at the the arm joint on that toy. It's just like yeah. a metal a metal tube. Yeah. <laughs> it's a yeah. It's a, it's a stick. <laughs> but no, you're, yeah. supposed, you're supposed to rotate his fists. Oh, oh the. Oh yeah. The uh. There you go. Yeah. Well, so you can you know make him yeah. Do so so Zana says this has wrist swivel right. So there you go. Yep. yep. <laughs> May not have any other articulation, but it works. You know, you, 
you're right. He's considered C list, but that's like so so wrong because he had more characterization than most other Transformers. Yeah. Yeah, he was such a he was so cool. He was like Jazz's like bro. Pretty much, and that I I still love his scene in the movie, Blackout and Shout. Yeah. Well, if the movie had been if they had kept the original script, he was supposed to be like a major player in that movie. That's, yeah, I remember mm-hmm. reading about that. Because you know he's fixing Autobot City, and then everyone leaves, and they just leave him there. But there was like a whole storyline on Earth that was supposed to happen, and he was kind of important to it. But so yeah, so wait so so everybody else just after the battle just takes off and leaves him there. What does he just go like make himself a peanut butter and jelly sandwich or something? No, I mean there's a whole bunch of other plots that got cut. Oh. Um, like like the Decepticons are like stealing Earth's energy or something, and I'm feeding it to Unicron. It you got to read the the leaked okay. script. It's really old. Yeah. And it's no, clearly, I, don't, I know there was clear the, why they didn't do it, but it's I know cool there was the uh, animatic or whatever of uh, it was like Devastator going against like Red Alert, Mirage, and some of them that was that was ultimately cut. Sideswipe, yeah. I think. Yeah, this is this is little. It's just like a script. Like it's yeah. way before they did any. Um, Stuff it, it really deviates quite a bit. <laughs> okay, that's what it's worth a read. So, so is it something to where that the movie would have been like the length of the newer Transformers movies, where it would have been like two and a half, three hours long or whatever? To maybe instead of an hour and a half. Mind. It's cool to see like where they were gonna go with it, but it's they went in a much better direction. They cut yeah. the right stuff, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I still process. wish they would have kept Iron Maiden on the soundtrack. <laughs> Were they supposed that, to be on it? The the original uh, what, one of the earlier trailers is, is the one that shows the Magnus in his diaclone colors. The background track for that is the Iron Maiden song "Lost for Words." It's it's an instrumental track. Huh. Wild. Uh, yep. Yeah. It is kind of amazing. Like you know, some of the the songs and whatnot that they, you know, they had some. You know, a little bit of heavy metal and whatnot in the, the show as it is. is kind of interesting. But. It needs a little more weight off. Yeah, that would have that been cool. It would have. So, like Unicron uh, transforms and all of a sudden fat starts playing. Um, <laughs> and then I was going to say, one of my other favorites too is this, you know, again, because I was still collecting um after the movie and whatnot as computron so that was this is one of the few like again this is not the toy that i had when i was a kid but um it it was one of the few combiners or the only combiner that i completed was uh computron so dude dude we were destined to be friends (laughs) (laughs) i had abominus you had what's his name compu balls you know (laughs) <laughs> look at look at when you pulled that up. I thought that was the generations version. They really nailed the colors on that. They oh did. yeah, they did. They did. Oh, on the generation. Yeah. yeah, this doesn't have any of the stickers applied, but yeah, personal favorite right there. So I yeah. only had the motorcycle dude. Mm-hmm. No. But like I I studied the studied. I, I just would look at the catalog over yep. and over and over. I felt like I had all the toys. You know, like I just right. looked at them so much, it wasn't like I needed them, or or someone I knew had them, or you, know, you didn't have the internet to watch videos or whatever. But those catalogs were so great because you you really felt like I mean, it gave you the whole toy line, and it was all like there wasn't stuff missing except for like ref, you know the mail away stuff. But yep. yeah, I think those catalogs are very instrumental in having had the brand persist. At least it. It's part of why I still care. So mm-hmm. it's cool to see this. So that is your—is that your actual childhood one? No, no, no. Lucas? Th- this is this is. I had to reacquire it. So um, yeah, that is one combiner I wanted in any any form between that or Combiner Wars, and I still haven't gotten either. And I'm, I'm kicking myself for not getting. The Combiner Wars is one of the better figures. Again, it was it was based on the Superion mold from yeah. Uh, oh yeah. So it's like you know one of one of the better combiners or whatnot so yeah i would definitely recommend either the u.s one or the unite warriors one yeah and that's what is. kind of tore me apart apart was that was it's like some of the unite warriors was so good but then some of the u.s was so good it's like which one do you get 
Yeah. I mean, they're so. both they're both good. So, like, I I would say Unite Warriors is better, but you know, it depends on uh, depends on what what sort of uh, I, I guess uh, accuracy you're going for. Yeah. Um. One one is uh, more partial to the cartoon appearance, whereas one's more partial to the to the toy appearance. Yeah. Unite yeah. Warriors um, is more cartoon, and and uh, Combiner Wars is more toy. Right. Uh-huh. Unite Warriors. Uh, Utilize the was it the like the, the breakdown and wheeljack type mold for light speed and the rook yeah. type mold for uh, nose cone, whereas uh, Combiner Wars was was brawl and uh, prowl uh, as as a base. Yeah, mold. yeah. And, and really, Computron in, in in that line I always thought was kind of neat because it was kind of like a Combiner Wars greatest hits. It's like you have like a. You have an aerial bot, an aerial bot type mold, uh, stun, uh, stun and type mold. You know, uh, that's true. Projective bot mold with with, with uh, you know afterburner based on based on groove, of course. You know, and it was it was just really neat. I was a, I never did this, but I thought the best way to do it is to get both sets and take the hands and feet from the Hasbro one and put them on the Unite Warriors one. I right. considered doing exactly that, but my wife I was saying the same game. thing. Well, well, then I'm going to have two copy chons. Just sell Scrounge. she will pay for most of it. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, what I did do, what I did do, though, is I took the uh, extras, uh, the, the extra weapons I had for the Generation 1 version, like the cannons and stuff, put those on the Combiner Wars version, because the 5mm oh. uh, pigs. There you go. It's on both of them. It looks really good. So, uh, so, so Jack, what uh, what were some of the ones that were instrumental in your youth? Well, other than Unicron, I... obviously. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Um, when I started out, I was I really loved how Megatron looked, his personality in Armada. I just absolutely loved them. Um, but the thing was, I never owned them. I never owned uh armada megatron or galvatron i think the best i think i got was like a mcdonald's version but yeah i never got my full actual big boy until i think it was 2015 and but i mean i had both versions of optimus which those two say what you will about that figure but i absolutely loved armada prime i loved how you know the trailer gimmick um so yeah it was pretty much the main classic characters of Transformers for Armada, obviously different, completely different takes on them. They were pretty much the ones that I wanted to kind of focus around was getting those. And sure enough, I now it's kind of funny that when I started out, I never had Megatron, but I had both Optimuses. But now it's, but like today, it's the other way around, where I don't have my Optimuses anymore, and then. I actually have a Megatron, so it's like, oh, now I gotta find Prime again. So both when you when you say both primes, are you including Bendy Prime? No, uh, the I actually should have. Yeah, I should have. Mm. I meant the obviously the original Big Prime, but then the Power Links version, the uh, oh, dark, oh the repaint, darker blue and darker oh. red. I had baller. Both. Okay, so so not the yeah. Kmart Power Links. Yeah, no. yeah, with the with the gold. Yeah. Yep, one was. I know, I think the Power Links was definitely a Christmas, because I think the scrapbook, because my, my mom was, like, big on scrapbooks, so she has pretty much every moment from my childhood uh, catalog, like, catalog. But then, I think the first Prime might have been a Christmas present the year before, but I could be wrong. But yeah, that... Wow. <laughs> so you're saying your mom is a Constructicon? <laughs> She's a scrapper? Pretty much. That joke brought to you by Rick Alvarez. <laughs> <laughs> I could see, I could see him saying that too. But yeah, I, just, I, I like I said, claim it. it was like, like we were talking about earlier. It's like those bigger figures that you really had no chance of getting whenever you go to the store. It's like, oh yeah, here it is for you know Christmas or Easter. But I mean, something like, oh, let's say like the little Legend Scatter Shot, you know, the tiny guy. That's something you can get, but anything else, no. 
So, but yeah, Optimus and Megatron from Armada were pretty much the big, the big Kickstarter. So, yeah, I just felt like the Unicron trilogy toys, like those were all really substantial toys. <laughs> like the amount of plastic in those things is, is oh pretty crazy. yeah. I mean, I thought this was great. I thought this was, you know, huge until we get to, oh, you know, Cybertron to where he's even more yeah. ridiculous. Yeah, that is a like, ridiculous eh. toy. I mean, it, it actually kind of steps up from show to show. It's like, Armado is kind of decent. Then you get to Energon. It's like, oh, okay. Then you get to Cybertron. It's like, oh, hot diggity damn. It's like, let's go. <laughs> I guess the same could be said for Optimus and, too. So and Starscream, and Cybertron, yeah. like that. What was that yeah, cause, huge, huge one that they have? Uh, yeah, because it's like Armada. He goes from like a Voyager, then he goes to like Scout, and then he goes, holy shit! So uh, that, so that was can't... probably one of the one of the best things I, I, I saw was was from uh, Cybertron Starscream where. Uh, Primus just has enough. He's, he just grabs a hold of both of his moons and just starts beating Starscream with them. See ya. <laughs> that was great. I did not. I kind of checked out of the fiction around that time. So <laughs> yeah, it was, it was, I just it watched was, the shows and I was fine. Yeah. Watch, watch the trilogy with an open mind, Paul. Well, you got to remember this was before YouTube, and I remember I found sure, some sure. places to download. Like I remember downloading. Either Galaxy Force or um, Superlink episodes or something, and yeah. like I just could kind of tell I didn't love it, and even and it wasn't subtitled or anything. I was just like, ah, I'm not gonna work at this. Like I got I got school and a job and stuff. Like so yeah. I just didn't end up going through it. But I did check out a few toys. Like the first BotCon I ever went to, I went with. Oh God, this was after I graduated college. But it was 2004 in Chicago, and I had one thing I wanted to get. And I was like, maybe I can find a Superlink laser wave. And I did find it. It was like $80. Oh, and I was just yeah. like, money. <laughs> like, here you go. <laughs> Make it rain. See ya. Uh, Mine now. I, I didn't really understand BotCon, so I just like, this is weird. This is like a warehouse, and there's people with tables. Ah, yeah. But I found, I found that. That was cool. But And it was... A guy running around trying to sell an Energon Ultra Magnus, which was a rare toy at that oh, time. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Still <laughs> is, still a very rare. It's a it's a blue overload. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And I, he, that was like, another figure I absolutely loved, along with Jetfire, that you know did the whole big combined thing with. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anyways. Now example. that now that uh, that Ultra Magnus that came packed with a uh, redeco of the Requiem Blaster, didn't it? I believe I'm going to look right so. now. It may have. It's like, like different colors than what we would later get in the Cybertron 2 packs. Looking right now. That's the, that's pretty much the end of my story, though, Jack. I, <laughs> I, just, I was trying to relate. Like This is what it was like for me as a you know, young adult mm -hmm. you know, looking at the, the, am, the Unicron trilogy through a completely different lens than you, which yeah. is looking at you were looking at what G one, how I was looking at G one, you know, much. back in the day. So, now, have interesting. You, Paul, have, have you since watched the Unicron trilogy at all? Have you taken that nah. time? Because nah. I'll tell you, uh, nah. they're nah. they're different, but they're they're not horrible. Uh, all all the except for a few, uh, just about all the Transformers series are available to be TV. They're totally free streaming. Yeah, I mean, you know, I'm a, I, I love the lore. I think it's important. The fiction's sure, sure. important, but like, I can, I don't have to know it all. Like, it's fine. Oh, uh, there's some. Yeah. That's that's for other people. Well, one day, years from now, you know, as you, as you get time, I I, I recommend it. Yeah, I mean, I know well, the beats. Not. I know the main beats of what happens to an sure. extent. You know, I don't know why Shockwave and Six Shot are brothers, but like, I'll accept it. Because Hasbro made them using the same. Yeah, yeah. But I don't. I, I think it's cool to hear your perspective on that stuff, Jack. That's the young guy. Yep. I never hear the end of it. Thanks, Rick. 
Well, you know what? Someday there'll be another young buck, and you know you'll just have to, you know, roll your eyes at them once in a while and lead them in the right direction. You young little. We'll, we'll, we'll just wait. But well, someone that's talking about how RID is their G one, but like they're not referring to. Sure. The RID, the older RID, the 2001, they're talking, they're talking about the, what, like, the 2015 oh. RID. And we'll be yeah. like, wow. That's, that's that's why I just default to calling it car robots, because yeah. then you know what I'm talking about. That's <laughs> what I'm right. tempted to call it, too. Is and if you're, really, like, huh? if you're really crusty, you call it Transformers 2000, which is what it was really originally built. Oh, as. yeah. Yep. <laughs> Before like anything actually came out. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> yep, yep. But yeah, I guess. Uh, do we have any other toys that we want to share as as well? That you know, yeah, or any other stories one. that you guys have? Well, actually, pretty much after the Unicron trilogy ended, I kind of fell out of the brand for I think the longest time until I. Had, I think, one Classics figure. Actually, no, I had two because I had uh, the Rodimus and then Starscream. Starscream, I don't know, to be honest, what happened to him because uh, it's like the only piece I have of him is like his right wing, um, which I think I shared on an Ouch My Wallet before. But uh, So that was like the only time, but even, even then I was like, eh. So, I mean, I still have, obviously, my Unicron Trilogy stuff, but then... Next thing you know, I started hearing stuff about, oh, they're doing a live-action movie, and this was, I think, I want to say late 06, I think, is when they first kind of said, you know, publicly. Uh, uh, that's, that's when the trailer dropped. Yeah, yeah it might have Mar- been. Mars Rover trailer. I could be wrong, but... Yeah. So I had this guy, the mm. first movie, Iron Eyed. He was such a yep. beast of a figure. Here we he go. is so worn down. I mean, one of his smokestacks broke off and i just ended up um, taking the broken piece off i mean like the pieces that hold his wheels are broken so it's permanently like this i mean wow. uh the both of the door pieces were so worn out you could see through them uh, and then that's fascinating uh, and then i mean i played with this thing the whole freaking time i had them before studio series became a thing which luckily I could finally retire this thing, but no, I think the biggest thing is that my windshield is also cracked and really falling apart. So this thing, this was another, like I said, the movie pretty much brought me back in and it was pretty much my G2, I guess, kind of. So, which is kind of weird to say, seeing how it's the whole franchise, like the movie franchise is just, yeah. So, so, like, it's been a little over 10 years since that first that stuff first started coming out. And so we're starting, like, the fact that you, sh- those toys were, inf- in my opinion, infinitely more complicated and fragile than, like, the stuff we grew up with, like the G1 toys. Because if you're a collector, there's, like, certain things that you just know. You're like, oh, yeah, Prowl's hood is always missing. Or not his hood, but, like, his canopy or, yeah. like... Mm-hmm. Swoop's beak is always gone, or this or that, and there's you know there's maybe like a handful, like maybe about twenty things that like if that's not messed up, like holy crap, you have a you have a good version of that toy. Like there are in there, there's like an unimaginable amount of those things for the movie toys. Oh yeah, like how many things are like barricades, arms are missing or something, you know, like the they're Frenzy. all ball joints. Yeah, there Frenzy you go. has been a big thing for Barricade. Well, it's been so. ten years now, and now people are going to start wanting that stuff. And so, like all that, all those like new, there's like a whole new set of lore or or like fan sort of memes, not memes because it's not jokes, but like just uh, things things that the fandom knows collectively. Mm. Like there's a whole there's going to be a whole bunch more of those coming up about about the new toys as people start dealing in loose movie collections and like people are looking to even though studio series exists you still want the originals oh yeah just like you could buy a siege optimus but g1 optimus is still like the thing you gotta have so like i never even really yeah a lot of those are clear 
plastic. So if the paint's worn off, yeah, it's going to look really crazy. Well, and like I said, it's both sides that are completely just fading away. It makes it look like, I think it was around Dark of the Moon they had that trans yeah, scan series. Yeah, Toys yeah. R Us. So it's Toys like R half the vehicle is, you know, completely painted, but then the back half is like clear. That's what this thing is starting to look like. It looks like yeah. the trans scanning. <laughs> it's completely weird. So it's a custom. <laughs> There you go. But yeah, I, I, I kind of know what you mean. Like, like just take mo movie figures, for instance. Like, like you were saying, um, you know, I, first thing that came to my mind was, uh, you know, the 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 70s Camaro B, the automorph gimmick with the hood. When that yeah. when that little plastic piece breaks, the hood is forever stuck in robot mode. Right. Yeah. Or or uh, Revenge of the Fallen, the the, the protoform star screen. Just well, the, oh, the thing I'm curious about is in, and I don't know, like, were the movie toys, like, highly collectible as far as, like, a lot oh, yeah. of collectors that were trying to get a mint and seal box? Oh, and absolutely. Went. So I didn't, I didn't know, oh, yeah. like, with that, like, how much of that affects the value to where you can find a lot of stuff, like, still. Like, whereas the G1, it's a lot harder to find stuff that's, like, sealed in box, whereas, like, yeah. movie stuff, uh, that, at that point, there's a lot of people that were still buying it and, you know, whatever, buy one to open well, and one to, you know, keep I mean, I mean, the mo the G1 stuff is la has been around for three times as long as right. the movie yeah. stuff. Yeah. So, True. like, just by, by entropy standards, you know, right. it's True. rare. But I, a lot of people hated the movies. Oh, yeah. So, so they didn't pay... It was both. It was both. There was a lot yeah. of product out there. A lot of kids wanted it, so a lot of a lot kids of played with it. You know, and and a lot of the dealers didn't really want to stick a, stick with it. You know, they're like, "Yeah, this isn't my. This isn't for me. I don't understand it." But um, I did an experiment that maybe I've mentioned before. But I decided I was going to collect every single movie toy, mint and seal box, <laughs> yep. and so I have them. I maybe am missing for, like three. From the and, first uh, film or all the films? I'll let you figure that out or take a all guess on it. But um, well, I don't know. I don't know what your budget. They like. they sure. are suddenly well. It was like a commitment I made in sure. 20, for over ten years, and I stuck to it. <laughs> yeah. And um, I think the experiment is turning out well for me, as far as I can see. <laughs> so. I just, but I have to pull that trigger and sell it at some point. But did, did you go so far as to get the Lunchables? Maybe not. I don't <laughs> think so. I mean, I, there, there were limits, but I, I do have a lot of fast action battlers. Yeah. Jack but again, Jr. going oh. going back to what we were talking about at the very beginning, where you have those like rare toys. Yeah, yeah. Or, like the things that you just thought were cool were rare. Well, like no one, if no one collected the fast action battlers, you know, in ten more years. Holy shit! The fast action battlers are worth a lot more than the other stuff because no one has them. Yeah. Yep. Because they cease to exist. The rest of them are right. all in the land. But but that's the thing I think is interesting is okay like Star Wars for example like when those movies came back out like there was a crap ton of toys that they pushed but everyone was looking to collect those toys and so all that stuff is none of it's worth anything. Like, I mean, literally nowadays, like, I mean, I'm sure there's, I'm sure there's some toys that, like, Star Wars that are rare or whatever that um, potentially could be worth money. But, like, the majority of Episode 2 toys or whatever are just, like, not worth anything. And so, whereas, like, like, kind of what you were talking about, Paul, about the collectors, like, where I could see a lot of the collectors being like, oh, G1 is the thing. I want to collect G1. And so they're not really focused on... The movie, like I'm sure that there are people uh, that that were, but I think that a lot of them, and so you kind of wonder if, like, it went through the same thing with kids that a lot of kids ended up buying it. So it's you know it's almost like a replay of, of G1 that you know, like I'm sure there's more stuff sealed that you can find easily of that stuff, but it's it, it definitely not something where it you know is just super easy to come by. Well, what, whatever you, however rare you think, or how hard or how valuable G One stuff is now, it's thirty five years old. When this movie okay. stuff is thirty five years old, it will be the same, and the G One stuff will have thirty five more have gone right. thirty five more years. And there, there, there's a point where everyone that cares dies. 
and right. <laughs> there is there is a cliff. I right. <laughs> right. So, right. It's like the uh, ten ten toys back in the sixties or whatever that aren't worth yeah. what they used to be kind of thing. Yeah, it's like Elvis you know, Elvis memorabilia is being given away because all the people that had it are dead and there's no one left that wants it because they're all gone. Much. <laughs> but uh um sorry that was a little bit morbid but um <laughs> yeah I, don't know. I just i just think everything goes in cycles anyone that's that's been a major dealer will tell you this and there's cycles within cycles within cycles as well so hmm stuff stuff goes in and out of fashion and it doesn't just happen once it goes it goes around and around and as long as Hasbro keeps putting out quality movies you know which I mean I'm not saying I said keeps you know, we'll see what happens in 2022 I'd really like them to reboot the whole dang thing but it's never gonna happen yeah but Bumblebee was a, I think a soft enough reboot to, to be able to carry it forward have to wait and see We'll see. Yeah, It'll be interesting you, to see. Tell me you've seen Bumblebee. No, he, oh, yeah. We've had this argument before oh, okay. on... I'm just, okay. I'm just keeping quiet, okay? <laughs> yeah, I was say, Paul, Paul has some strong thoughts on, on it. I think that... I can't remember what show we've we've talked about it before, but... Uh, yeah. So, okay. Um, I enjoyed it. But, oh, yeah. No, I very, very good. <laughs> so... Anyway, um, all right. Well, um, I, I know we've been going going for a while here, so um, I guess I just want to make sure and uh, promote uh, some of our other shows on the network. So uh, make sure and also uh, check out Microcasters Tuesday nights on the TF Talk Facebook page. Uh, check out Ask My Wallet every couple weeks. Uh, it's on Wednesday nights at on uh, eight thirty on YouTube, uh, nine thirty Eastern. Uh, also, cut the tape is on Fridays uh, typically uh, as well, and then of course our, our Sunday show is uh, TF Talk News, uh, which uh, had some great news on on the fandom and the goings on uh, for that week. Warm sausage. So so <laughs> check that out, uh, and then of course TFLP. So uh, we're typically on Monday nights at nine thirty Eastern, eight thirty Central. Uh, for the main show so um well i thank you guys for uh for being on and and talking about this stuff and all that so does anyone have any other final thoughts they want to you know say before we wrap here toys are fun yes damn right and this was my mr starscream stand-in but it didn't really work (laughs) warm sausage so i see (laughs) <laughs> All right. All right. Oh my well, God! Thanks, everyone. My horrible. Uh-oh. Oh. <laughs> All right. Night, everyone. Toodles. Toodles.